Good morning, everybody. How's everyone this morning? Seen a few people still out plowing their driveways and yards and all that it's wonderful stuff. So just as we had showers of snow, let's pray we get showers of blessing here this morning. And the presence of the Holy Spirit is here this morning. So just uh, want to welcome our YouTube family as well with us this morning. May God bless you in the comfort of your homes. Um, and uh, just thank you for coming this morning, and uh, it's great to have some visitors with us today. And uh, a couple of these guys were at our house for a week, and they're heading back home today. And uh, nice to meet Chico back there. Nice to have you with us. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we thank you that we can gather in your name. Lord, we just, we just want to be in your presence, Lord. Father, I just pray that not one person will go home disappointed today with their encounter with you, Lord. That, Father, you'll encourage the discouraged, the Lord, the one that's frustrated, Lord, that, Father, you'll just minister to them, Lord, the one that needs peace about a decision, Lord. Father, we know that you are all those things and more, Lord. And we just want to praise you this morning. We want to worship you and thank you for, for this time together, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. And we pray, Lord, Again, today, through for the world, the kingdom of God, we pray for the word as it goes forth. Through, there will be souls saved today. Lord, that the harvest will come forth, Lord. Father, we just want to see more of you in our presence and in our lives, Lord. So have your way this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call on the worship team. Good morning. We're going to stand, uh, and, but if you get tired, please sit down. You know, you, there's no rule, thou shalt stand for the whole worship service. Except for Tim. Yeah, Tim has to stand, yeah. Just kidding, Tim. Let's put our hands and our hearts together this morning. We are all together. We're gonna call upon your name Cause there's nothing we like better Than to sing and give you praise Lord, we welcome you We welcome you We welcome you Come fill this place Bring it here your kingdom come right here just like in heaven may your will be done because lord we welcome you we welcome you lord we welcome you come fill this place father come fill this Welcome you, Jesus, we seek your face, cause all we want to do is give our love to you, Lord, we welcome you, we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you, come fill
Father, come fill this place. We welcome you. Jesus, we seek your face. Cause all we want to do is give our love to you. Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Come fill this place. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to love and shout your praises loud. I was lost
We can sing from here. Need a ch I should have brought you a chair. Now I'm, I feel so bad. I should have brought her a chair. Well, you look rested now. Thank you. <laughs> you, you really do. I'll get you a chair. You're in trouble. Okay, just okay. you're in trouble. Uh, we're just bugging you. There, there's a, a movie out called Jesus uh, Revolution, and I'd encourage you. I haven't seen it. I think Pastor's going today, and we want to get to see it. But it's about um, it's about the Jesus movement in in the '60s, '70s, where where the hippie community came to Christ, and it started in California at Chuck Smith's church. Could you see him as a hippie? I have pictures. <laughs> I have pictures. Uh, anyways, uh, and out of that movement came, really it changed the way that we do church. It changed the music. It went from the less formal, uh, it went to a less formal form of music. And um, it, it brought forth uh, like the Keith Greens and second chapter of Acts. And um, a lot, all the vineyard music came out of, out of that. And and uh, it was it made cr Christianity a little bit more casual in terms of how we dress in church. I mean, at one time it was like three piece suit and shined up shoes. You can still shine your shoes, right? Yeah. You shine your shoes, anyways. But uh, I'd encourage you to see it because it's really a part of of church history and how the church evolved to 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 where it is. Is that, is that enough? Okay. <laughs> it's called Jesus Revolution. It's playing in Belleville. It's in Peterborough. Yeah. Feel and you know, for a Christian film, last weekend, it was third in, in dollars generated, which means lots of people went to see it, which is really good. And people are getting saved right in the audience afterwards. People are praying with each other, and people are giving their heart to the Lord. So, I mean, what perfect timing, right? It's perfect. After, you know, the revival and going on down in the States and then up here and all over the world, it's like Jesus is doing something. He's got things moving, and... We just got to jump on board and be ready for whatever he's going to give us. All throughout history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring.
that in practice, didn't we? Yep. I couldn't hit it. Okay, we'll skip that one. <laughs> I'll work on I'll work on that one at home, okay? Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, there's yeah, I came in on the wrong spot. I wish I had other musicians up here that could cover up for my mistakes. <laughs> if you know any, they're they're welcome to come. I'm getting a little crazy today. says you can't have fun in church. If you can't, you're going to the wrong church. Look inside the mystery. Oh Look inside the mystery. Oh my goodness. I've lost it this morning, folks. Look inside the mystery. You know another worship leader that's available, like right now? I have totally lost it. Oh, it's on tape, too. I'll watch this when I get home. It's okay. Look inside, inside the, the mystery. mystery. Glorious, my eyes are Glorious, my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. Glorious, he stands above the rulers of the earth. Glorious.
this next song that Alden's going to lead us in is Draw Me Close. And this here is a prayer for each one of us. We just need to draw so close to Jesus that we can feel his breath at times, feel his heart beat for people. And if you have something in your life that you need a miracle for or you need an answer, I pray that you would just draw close to him. Draw so close to him. And you will see things happen that you've never seen before. Because what does he want? He doesn't want our money. He doesn't want our houses or anything else. He wants our heart and our love. That's what he wants. He wants our hearts. Our whole heart. Not a half a heart but a whole heart. When you say to your husband, do you say, you can have half of my heart, but that's all you get is half. How long do you think your, heart, your marriage would last or your friendship? He wants our whole heart. Draw me close to you. you. Yes, Lord. Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire Oh, you are, Lord, you're my desire Nothing else Nothing else could take your place. I feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find a way. Lord, bring me back to you. You're all.
Draw me close to you, Lord. I don't know about you, but many mornings when I wake up, I just lay on my bed before I get up, and I just say, oh, Holy Spirit, I need more of you. You know, and I pray that for you guys as well, and I say, oh, God, we need more of you. I need more of you. You know, and... When I sin, I go to the Lord and I ask him to forgive me, you know, but I find myself just laying in bed and say, Lord, forgive me. And I'm, I, I'm sure I'm asking him to forgive me for something I already forgiven for, but just that cleansing, you know, you, you want to be able to just totally be free and walk in him and what he has for us. But it comes when we draw close to him, when we lay it all down again. You know, we sing that song, but that's harder to do. It's easy to sing. It's easy to preach, but it's not easy to do, is it? If we're honest, it's not. To do that, we would need to get rid of this thing that's around our wrists, and that's time. We would have to throw it away and say, I'm just going to stay in the presence of God and just worship and worship and whatever be will be. And so this morning, I'm going to speak a little bit about Revival. And I know maybe one, I just can't shake it off. I cannot shake it off. I just, I just feel we need to keep treading that turn. I know I need it. I know we need it. I guess we we'll preach it until we see it, until we experience it. But you know, it's just to feel the warmth of your embrace. I know there's some here this morning. That's what you, exactly what you need. You need the warmth of his embrace more than anything else that I could say this morning. You need that warmth. He's there to give it to you. He's there. He's that father waiting for us to come running into his lap and just say, take me in. Just, I'm so glad to be home. I'm so glad to be home. You know, sometimes we pray, play church, we play religion, we play whatever, and we just come to him when we need him just when we're in a need or when we were just in a low, but, you know, he wants us all the time. He wants us all the time. And so just that song, that other song, Glorious, it just, uh, that song is just powerful, powerful, glorious. All glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Oh, yeah.
just quickly announcements. There's uh, luncheon tomorrow. Uh, Bible study changes to Wednesday night. Starting this Wednesday, we're going to go to 7 o'clock in person or Zoom. On the 22nd, we're going to a, start a 10-week series. If you want to just show that right now, it's a 10-week series. And this is, we have a workbook with this. If you are interested, I need to, I, I, one, I need you to let me know, and two, I need to let me know that you're committed, and we will get you one. But it's talk, overcoming emotions that destroy. We're going to spend 10 sessions together at Deliver and and break down. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn about that emotional makeup that God has made for every single one of us. And sometimes as Christians, when we talk about emotions, uh, we get a little nervous. Uh, we're not very comfortable with our emotions. Some emotions are very, very powerful. They have the power for good, but they have power for great destruction. In this first session, we're going to talk about the monster that lives within. We all have this capacity with a certain emotion that can literally destroy relationships. We're going to learn what it is and then how to address it. Why don't you join me? Who's got emotions? Do you find that they're really wacky sometimes? <laughs> Maybe all the time. So we're just going to seek the Lord and uh, we'll, we'll leave that alone. So I just want to make sure we announce that. And that's not till the 22nd. The next couple of weeks, we're going to emphasize more of a prayer time. We're going to have Zoom and we'll meet here together. But we're going to um, have time of prayer. And I believe that's important. And then that gives us a couple of weeks to get into that as well. I want to thank um, Rita and Art for sharing the word the last couple of weeks. And uh, I want to take this time to thank the board for their uh, service over the past year. As you know, we had a business, business meeting last, uh, last week, and so we just want to thank them for their service over the past year and their willingness to continue this new year. So we just want to thank them for that. And uh, can we have our board members stand for just a minute for those that maybe don't know who the board members are? We got them all? Okay, so we thank you, Lord, for the board members. We thank you for their faithfulness. And I want to thank everybody that was part, has been part of the ministry in one way or another, prayers, finances, work. We just thank the Lord for each and every one of you and praise to his name. God has been faithful, for sure. The last time I spoke was February 5th. That was a very special day. It was my wife's birthday. <laughs> That me my message that particular morning, and I know all, we all have memories, and unless you actually jotted it down, you won't remember what I spoke on as a whole. But that particular morning, we spoke about revival and the great revival that took place in Nineveh and how it affected everybody in the land and even the animals. And the king decreed that the people were to participate in a nationwide fast, that we were to call on the Lord with a sense of urgency to give up the evil ways and their violence. And I thought, Lord, that's really what we need to do, a sense of urgency. I believe that's what we're seeing happening through the Asbury Revival and those youth is an urgency to pray. And I believe that is something God wants to speak to all of us about, that urgency. Yes, we all pray. I get that. I pray on this. And you guys, I know we all pray, but there's a sense of urgency, a sense of getting down to business about particular situations and situations things and the king's response was who knows maybe god will relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so we will not be punished and so god saw their response and god sees our response that they had turned from their wicked ways and god did not destroy them that revival impacted the nation for many years and we know eventually even then they went back to their ways and Nahum, about 120 years later, records where they actually were destroyed. Nineveh, it's a, uh, sorry, revival. It's a word that, I guess, brings hope. As you know, over the last few weeks, there has been a lot of media coverage about the revival at the Asbury College. 
and people have gone there from all over the world. And the same could be said about the Brownsville Revival and the Toronto Blessing. And I know some of you, I think, maybe even went to Brownsville, and maybe some of you went to the Toronto Blessing. People travel from all over to be part of what God was doing. And I believe that what, what happened and is, has happened in, is unique in regards to the Asbury Revival. It's been interesting to read the commentaries and the opinions of individuals. Some would say the revival is over. They close the door, the revival is over. But I believe it's only beginning. It's gone to school, to school, to state, to state, to, I'm going to believe even to here. The Holy Spirit is moving. Hallelujah. I believe revival can start in one spot or location, but it's a true revival when it goes far and beyond the four walls where it started. And here's something interesting I read, and, and you're probably well aware, but the word revival, we use it all the time, not all the time, a lot, is never mentioned in the New Testament. It's not used in the New Testament. Maybe because, and I think this one guy says, maybe it's because what we call revival, God calls standard operating procedures. Isn't that really the way we are supposed to be operating as the New Testament church? That was revival that was taking place there, if you want to call revival. The Holy Spirit came and 3,000 were at it. Acts 4, 31, when the power of prayer shook the building, it shook the power of God, shook the believers, and then the power of gospel shook the city. It went. Acts 19, 7 to 20, after a demon-possessed man beat the tar out of seven men who misused the name of Jesus to try to cast out a demon, it says in verse 17, when this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus. They were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those believed now came open, openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burnt them publicly. And when they calculated the value of the scrolls, some said it was 50,000 pieces of silver or several millions of dollars. And so the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. But I think from, those verses, from that verse, there's a couple things. God, Jesus, was highly honored. And that's what we have to do. We need to ensure that Jesus is honored and glorified in all that we do, in all that we say, all the efforts that we have, that Jesus be high and lifted up to allow his glory to fill the temple. Oh. Honor him. And the other part, they openly confessed. Now, I know we don't want to have a confession service here this morning, but you know, if we could have a confession service, I believe it would be amazing what God would do. Our biggest fear, that it would be on Facebook tomorrow morning, and that would scare all of us. Right? Let's be honest. We all got secrets we don't want out there. We got all sins we have confessed or want to confess, and we don't, we don't want it out there. But there just seems to be that place that they openly confessed. And that's what is revival. And so my prayer is this morning that Lord ignite the fire in us for your word, for worship, for prayer, for seeking his face. That's really what I all oh, that our love for him would be back. And so this is a piece I read and if you watch the Grammy Awards, don't take offense to what I'm about to share. I came across this post upon uh, this week, and it was by a guy from Albany, New York. And he wrote this. On se- Sunday night, February 5th, the Grammy Awards were on primetime CBS television. It was viewed by 12.4 million Viewers, did anybody else read this post? Okay, so there's the odd person. Not sure if you watched it, I didn't. It doesn't matter. But at the Grammys, Sam Smith and Kim Petrus, I believe it is, performed a song with the title, Unholy. Sam Smith tweeted out, this is going to be special with the devil emoji. CBS quickly responded, you can say that again, we are ready to worship. 
And the comment he made here, Satan has forever tried to steal the worship. And that made me think of Ezekiel 28, 13, where it seems a hint that Satan was involved with the music in heaven. Mark goes on to say, he says, they led the world in five minutes of satanic worship as the world was their stage and congregation. Remember, this was February the 5th. But three days later, God responded. Was that a coincidence? He says, I don't think so. As we know, the number three is a number that biblically represents a stamp of approval. God will not be upstaged by any man or even the devil himself. Amen. It's the right spot to say amen. He will not be upstaged. He will not be outdone. No matter what happens, bro, whatever happens out there, God will not lose. We are on the winning side. Hallelujah. We need to walk as winners, live as winners, spread the word as winners. We have the message of hope that this community needs and surrounding communities need. And so God, on February the 8th, responds without any major TV network on a normal Wednesday morning with a bunch of hungry, average college students from Ashbury. No million-dollar sponsors, nowhere in sight, no fancy stage, no lights, no sound system at that point. SAC, an assistant school coach, Spoke at that Wednesday morning chapel service after, after the session. And at the end of his message, a handful of students stayed around to pray and to sing. And they just never left. In that session, one of the men had openly confessed some of the things, some of the sins that he had been involved in. And so they just kept singing and worshiping, and the, text, the students, they end up texting students outside that had already left to say, you better come back here and see what's going to happen. And you know what happened? They just started to come. They just started to come. And by the next morning, the Thursday morning, there was 500 people waiting to get in, young people waiting to get in. They came from all over to worship. Worship went vi- viral. It went viral. God was putting on his own show for the entire world to see. Not for five minutes, but for hours and hours and hours. Can you imagine? 12 days straight. The light stayed. Imagine, just visualize that right here. 12 days straight. We had enough people that it just went on and on and on. They prayed. Ellen would lead for an hour. Somebody else would lead for an hour. Someone else would lead. And that's how they did. And they were all prayed up. They were all prayed up. Can you just imagine that? You know what it's like just to be in a few minutes in the presence of God. Imagine if you're in there for a, a, a while. A good time. But God will not be outdone. God will not be upstage. To God be the glory. It brought me to Isaiah 42 for a saying. It says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to a graven image. He's saying, I will not share my glory with another. Hallelujah, that's right. The devil thought Jesus was done when they nailed him to the cross. Remember the story we're going to read going into Easter very soon. But the devil thought he won. He thought that Jesus was done when he went into that, on the cross and went into that grave. But three days later, we celebrate his resurrection. Hallelujah. So that you and I might have life and we have purpose. Because if there was no resurrection, there's no hope. So the resurrection gave us hope. And we live in that hope. Amen. And so, praise God. And so the invitation is just, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I'm not sure whether what happened at Asbury is a revival. Uh, Some call it an awakening. It all depends on your definition. You know, it doesn't really matter what you call it. It doesn't really matter. But nobody can deny that there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in that place. You cannot deny that. These young men and women worshiping God, just praising him and worshiping him, repenting of sin, receiving exhortation from God's word, and calling out on him. Praise God. The interesting thing, this is not a first for this college in particular. 
historians said it happened there in the 30s and, and in the 50s and in the 70s. And one place I read that the one in the 70s was actually a cat, uh, catalyst to what um, Eldon referred to, the Jesus movement. Uh, they, they did seven days and nights uh, of praise and worship. And so we know that God is moving mightily by his spirit and the media really helped promote this thing, or technology, I should say. Hashtag um, Ashbury Revival had more than 70 million views. And this was like, it's probably a lot more than that now. 50 to 70,000 people come to this little town of 6,000. Imagine people come to our, like, what would it look like if 50 or 60,000 people came around here in this community? <laughs> Be amazing. But God is good. God is good. And so I've been really taken up by this whole thing. I've been reading it, interesting. What can you learn? What can you find? And I come across a, a couple of experience of people that went there from Canada. And so I want to share a couple of them. Uh, the first one is a Looney, I was going to say it's Ron, Ronnie, it's Looney Sims, an evangelist from Saskatchewan. Him and his daughter went there. And here were some of his comments. He said he was impressed with the transparency of people participating and said it lacks a high-powered leader with a known profile, unlike the Brownsville revival in the early 90s. He said, yesterday, one of the teachers said, if you're suicidal and having dark thoughts like this, please stand. And all these kids stood up. There was no barrier. There was nothing that held them back from getting up and saying, this is what my issue is. This is my problem. There was no judgment, only desire for them to be set free. And I always want you to know that this needs to be a safe place. This needs to be a safe place. If you're fighting and wrestling with suicide thoughts and depression, oppression, whatever, don't keep it to yourself. Find a brother or sister that's just sitting beside you or next to you or we're over on the other side and you can confide in and trust in. Come to these altars and pray it through. Have someone pray you through it. There's no judgment. No judgment. He tells us not to judge. Judge not, lest ye be judged, he says. So please be open to what God wants to do in your life. No one's going to post it on Facebook. No one is going to do that. Your privacy is here with him. Uh, and so he goes on, this guy goes on, he says, when we were here, you'd have no, name, no names leading the worship, no names talking. He says there wasn't much preaching, um, no great evangelists, no great song leaders. And the comment he made, they actually some worship leaders went down there, known worship leaders went down there thinking they were going to help. And they asked him to go sit down. They actually told him to go up in the balcony and sit down. Low key, all glory to God. Another spot I read, there was one of the worship leaders was at the altar praying. Nobody knew who that worship leader was. They were just going around and praying with her and everything else. And so just beautiful. Just ordinary people like you and I. My, that's my point this morning. He can do it right with us, ordinary people. Jesus loves ordinary people. The Holy Spirit lives in ordinary people, and he wants to use ordinary people to do great exploits. And so it's all fantastic. And here's another story from Ontario. This is a 20-year-old Victoria Miracle from Ontario. And I, she might be closer than I think, maybe down that way somewhere. But they made the 14-hour trip. She said it was worth to put life on hold for three days. Our first full day, I spent nine hours in total at the altar, crying, repenting, praying, and praising. Nine hours. I was overwhelmed by the peace and love I felt from Jesus and the prayer teams. She says, the first time in my life I was at an altar with people my own age to see a revival break out of my Generation Z is something I've never knew could happen actually happened until it did. She said, depression no longer holds a place in me. Anxiety has been defeated, and insecurity has been overcome by Jesus. 
she says, I learned this, one thing, take Jesus as a whole because when he is fully present, no one thing is missing. He can get every bit of us as we give him ourselves and look at him. And so I, I share these, not for us to go down there. That's not at all to, to go down there because they're not there right now. They're moving around. But I guess my point is that when we meet together in one accord, in one place, uninhibited, willing to repent, willing to worship, willing to focus on Jesus, the Holy Spirit will visit us in life-changing ways. Amen. He will. He will. And we give him all the glory for that. I'm not sure if this, I'm just going to throw this one in here, but Fox News, I don't know whether you watch Fox News, but that's actually where I first, I'd seen Tucker, Tucker Carlson do a, an interview of a young lady who had been there and shared her experience. And I'm not promoting Fox or not, I'm just, this is just the story, just take the story as it is. And so I seen the interview and I, he was, it came across, he was very curious what she was saying. And he was kind of awestruck and I guess the next day he talked to his team there and they said, can maybe we get together and go down there? Go there. And he, they called the college and talked to the professors and everything else. And So I guess the Thursday night before they were about to go, the college called them and said, we don't want you to come. We love your show. We like your show. But we don't want you to come. It's not personal, but the ongoing service at Asbury is purely spiritual. It's got nothing to do with politics or business. No one there is making money from it or planning a run for office. It's not really a place for TV cameras. And this was Carlton's response. He says, and I wish I could have done it on video because it just it seemed really powerful. He says, and we understand that, he said. In fact, we deeply respect it. God bless them for turning us down. It's not a spectacle. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And then I'm going to close with this. This is um, another kind of a thing I come across. It's wrote by Greg, a guy named Greg. and He does blogs, I guess, and I, I don't know anything about that part, but he addresses an email he received from Zoe, one of the newer and younger team members of a day or two share, whatever that is. And she wanted to know about revival, Asbury revival. And actually, she wanted to know about revival in general. And here's how the email went. Hey, you should write a blog defining revival. Most of this course I've seen online is debating whether this is a revival, and it seems that everyone has different definitions. It might be helpful for people around my age, 25 and younger, who have never seen or experienced a revival firsthand. I think there's a generational gap between people who have seen revival and those who have no personal experience with this sort of movement or concept. She said, personally, the word revival doesn't mean anything to me. It seems like a fictional term. It feels like a term older Christians use for whatever they see fit. And the writer's response to that was, I think Zoe is right. He agreed with her. And so he said, those of us who are older are probably much more familiar with the term revival and awakening than younger generation. The writer says he was old enough to remember the tail end of the Jesus movement and all of the Jesus-loving, belly-button-wearing hippies of the early 70s. I don't remember any of that. As I already mentioned, I do hope to go see the uh, Jesus Revolution movie because it talks about that history of that story, and I believe it will be very beneficial. But back to Zoe's question, what is revival? Re revival, divine. John Piper, and again, I don't know whether you like John or don't. I'm not here. It doesn't matter. But this defined revival this way. And this is always what I kind of thought it was. But in the history of the church, the term revival in its most biblical sense 
has meant a sovereign work of God in which the whole region of many churches, many Christians, has been lifted out of a spiritual indifference and worldliness into conviction of sin, earnest desires for more of Christ and his word. Did you get that? Do I need to repeat it? No? Yeah. Repeat it? Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is his definition. It was, in the history of the church, the term revival in its most biblical sense has meant a sovereign work of God in which the whole region of many churches, many Christians, has been lifted out of di- spiritual indifference and worldliness into conviction of sin and an earnest desire for more of Christ and his word. It's a pretty rounded definition. If you look at the Welsh revival of 1904, all over the country there were testimonies of hardened souls receiving salvation and lives being changed was the talk of the town. That was the talk of the town. And the impact of the Lord's hand was evident in their lives and stories of profanity, silence, theaters deserted, courts abandoned due to a lack of crime, bars shutting down were commonplace. Entertainments such as football matches simply could not compete with the presence of his glorious visitation. Sales of beer and alcohol declined steeply while people's pocket Bibles were snapped up like hot cross buns as people were hungry for the word of God. Isn't that amazing? They were saying that some of these guys, and maybe someone shared this story, and I think it's kind of cute, where even their animals didn't know them because they weren't, you know, they were always hurting their animals and swearing at them all the time. And while they would go back and they weren't swearing anymore, so the uh, horses were confused. So, <laughs> but anyways. But my prayer is, oh Lord, do it again, do it again, Lord. You know, and I look at that word. I believe the Holy Spirit works in revival includes many different aspects. And you know, I just, R, remember that letter R. Involves regeneration. It involves people coming to know Jesus Christ. That's part of revival, coming, regeneration, the impartation of divine life. Two, revelation. Revival begins, revelation, as you receive revelation from the Lord, you're going to grow. He said, with, uh, what's it say? Uh, without vision, a nation perishes. Well, really, it's talking about without a revelation of God, a nation perishes. And you and I, without a revelation of God, we perish. And so sometimes we need a fresh revelation from him. Not living on the old all the time and just looking at what we used to do. It's not how we start, it's how we finish. It's how we finish. Another are refreshing. Times in the presence of God are reinvigorating, aren't they? They are, they're reinvigorating. They revive, they give us strength. They give us energy. They give us zeal. They are another R word. Revitalize. Restoration. Returning to our former state. Returning to our first love. Giving him our whole heart. Again, easier said than done. Our hearts. Out of the heart. Repentance. Repentance means to rearrange our entire thinking. It's turning 180 degrees and staying on that path. And so that repentance turns to reformation, that we were staying reformed, we're staying changed. It's not just saying, I'm sorry for my sin and then going back and doing it again the next day. Sorry for my sin and going back. Actual repentance is repenting and turning 180 degrees. And that takes the Holy Spirit working in us. Can't do it in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. And so, actually, the Bible college professor from Asbury, he he hesitates to call what's happening there a revival. He writes this. Only if we see lasting transformation which shakes the comfortable foundations of the church and truly bring us all to a new and deeper place, can we look back in hindsight and say, yes, this has been a revival. Time will tell. Yet there's no doubt 
he says, we witnessed something unusual, the intens intensification of God's power, demonstration and word and worship and renewing hearts and lives. You know, it shouldn't be surprised that, you know, it's amazing that it's college students, it's young people. It's amazing, it's wonderful. And if you go back, there's a lot of it in history. I, I was surprised. It's, in 1802 at Yale College, a, a spiritual movement began with such a power that more than a third of the students professed faith in Christ. And the whole college was shaken, wrote a freshman. It seemed for a time as if the whole mass of students would press into the kingdom. It was, a, it was the Lord's doing and marvelous in our eyes, he says. Oh, what a blessed change. So, and again, and over and over again. For those, you know, we, I've gone to the river last year a couple times, and you know, it's, I don't call it a revival, but it's youth that are on fire in worship. And it's exciting to see youth on fire. You know, like, oh, no holds bar pretty well. Some of us, we still got holds bars, don't we? <laughs> we'll go so far, but we won't go the rest of the way. I'm the same. I, you know, I just want to come in front of the altar sometimes some of those songs. I, I'm holding back sometimes. One morning I'm going to go. And it's not for a show. But that's what I'm saying. I'm just being honest. I know I've got them. I know you've got them. He wants to set us free. He wants to set us free to worship him in freedom, but in spirit and in truth. And you know, the bad thing, the negative thing about emotions we bring that in there. You know, in past revivals, there have been manifestations that are out of emotions, which were not honoring and pleasing to God. And we got to address that too. We need to understand. That's what I see from this thing happening in Ashbury. It seems to be very much in order. Yet God has his Holy Spirit to reign and does his thing. And so some guy, I guess, wanted to start to blow his chauffeur. And they said, no, no, just quiet down. We can't go off and do our own thing. We need to go with the flow of what the Holy Spirit is doing. Amen? It's more of that. So it's not about emotion, but we are emotional beings, so don't tell me. I've seen you cheer for the Maple Leafs, and I can tell you, and whoever other team you like, and you've got emotions, we just got to learn to garner them towards Jesus Christ and hunt and lift it up. He lifted up. This is my prayer, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Can you play that one, Eldon? Honey, if you want to come up. Kendra, if you know if you want to come up. We know the Holy Spirit is here, but here's just an invitation. Open up your heart to him this morning. We all need to experience a personal revival, amen? And when that happens, we're going to experience a greater revival even in our own communities around about. And so we just pray for that. Praise you, Lord.
want to open the altars this morning. If you want someone to pray with you, just come up and um, we'll just pray with you this morning. If you just want to come and just worship, I'd like us to sing that again. Just open up your heart to him and fill all the hungering and thirsting within. Restore us, oh Father. Revive us again, Lord. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome.
lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. Cause nothing else Change forever to your 
Pai. Yeah.